there. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kathleen Goodman, and I'm doing your coffee today. Um, welcome to Wellspring Community Church. Uh, hospitality here is more than just coffee. It's so much more. It's making meals for people who are um, experiencing life changes. It's um, about bringing the church together in a community of maybe potluck and Thanksgiving. But today I'm going to be making coffee. Coffee because that's what I do on a Sunday morning often. So this is my maker and I'm going to go... Church's Easter Sunday service live online. I am Bethany Scase and I am so glad that you can join us. I pray wherever you are that God can speak to each and every one of you today. Matthew 28 verses 5 to 6 says, The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. God bless each of you. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide
much for what you've done, God. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the need of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. Every fear, all the 
is replaced by your love, by your love.
again. the truth that you are the King, that you are the Lord. And we think of the words of these songs when it says, all, all hail the King Jesus, all hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Let every knee bow down before him. And Lord, we just come to you and we recognize how great and how powerful you are. And you have come in such a way to bring life to every one of us. And so, Lord, we rejoice in that today. We rejoice and we celebrate that today is the day that you rose from the dead. And, and why that's so important to all of us is because we can now be alive, that we can now experience the life that you have desired to bring us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing here this morning. We thank you that we can celebrate. And Lord, we're so grateful that wherever people are this morning, wherever you are this morning, that you're, you're able to celebrate the life that Jesus wants to bring you. And so whether you're sitting alone or with family or with, with a few close people, or you've, you're joined a watch party or whatever, I just want to encourage you this morning that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive and the, why that's so important is because then we can be alive and we sing these songs and we rejoice in the truth of who Jesus is because he's given us freedom from every other thing in our lives and even in the midst of situations like we're dealing with at the present there is hope because of the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name and so we rejoice in that this morning it's so good to be able to do that together in every way that we're doing this this morning. This small group of us here today and you on the other side of the camera, we're so glad that you could join us in our time together. And we're just gonna continue that time together here this morning and celebrate that. Looking forward to what Mark is gonna share with us. And we're looking forward to just all the different pieces of us celebrating this together. So just uh, go ahead and have a seat if you're, if you're not sitting already at home, and we'll just continue in our time together. Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us here on Easter Sunday morning. And God bless you as we continue our time together. Go ahead and have a seat. Well, good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter. I'm Andrew. And I'm Anita. I'm the associate pastor at Wellspring Community Church, and we're so glad you could be with us today. Thank you for joining us here in our home this morning, and we're so thankful that you have welcomed us into yours. If you want to connect with us in any way, uh, there are a number of different ways that you can do that. And the number one way is to connect with us through our website, which is wellspringchurch.ca. And there are a number of different pieces of information you can find there, our phone number, our email address, even our mailing address if you wanted to connect through those things and those will be at the bottom of the screen as we're talking. We also have social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Our YouTube channel is YouTube slash C slash Wellspring Community Church. Uh, and you can direct message us on any of those platforms as well. We'd be glad to hear from you, uh, whether you need, you've got a need or we can pray with you, we'd be glad uh, to hear from you. 
Also, we wanted to let you know about a few things that are going on in the church. We do have a number of different groups that are continuing on in our Wellspring family, uh, but we do have some open uh, connect times as well. On Tuesday at 7, our lead pastor, Mark Brule, does a Q&A about his previous message. And on Wednesday at 7, we also have a prayer time that both of those things are connected uh, are conducted through Zoom, and you can find the information that you need about those things and how to get connected to those through our social media platforms. Also, uh, if you go to our website and want to sign up for uh, emails, you can find out about that through there as well. There's a constant email flow going through there. So sign up today if you want to connect. Just a few announcements we wanted to share with you today. We're Still planning to do our VBS in the summer in July, and if you want to be involved in that and reach out to our student ministry director, Amelia Arachi, you can do that through our Church Center app, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that very shortly, but my wife, Anita, has an announcement that she'd like to share with you about Elisha House, which is where she works. Yes, we have been collecting items, and I'm so thankful for them for our baby shower that we hold um, twice a year, and unfortunately, our spring shower had to be canceled because of COVID and um, finding that because of continued restrictions we're not going to be able to hold it the way we typically do. So we're still accepting donations. We would like them dropped off instead of at the church at Elisha House and um, we have three girls that we're, we're supporting right now through this shower and they're all three of them are having girls or are, have already had girls and um, we are going to hopefully hold a drop-off baby shower and videotape it so everybody can see how excited they are when they receive their gifts so yes thank you once again for giving and um, if you would like to give again please drop your gifts off to Elisha House great. at 48 Burger Street here in Welland. Great, super, thanks. Uh, we also want you to continue sharing with us how God is moving in your lives and how we can pray and support you. And um, we've had a, a number of people share with us the way God is moving in their lives and they're praising God for the following thing. Somebody has been dealing with uh, a significant lump on their head and that is slowly going away and so they're thanking God for that. Somebody else was having difficulty getting permission to work from home in the present environment and was able to finally do that. And then another young couple was talking about how um, one of them had been laid off and they wanted to share that they felt, you know, they felt really uh, impressed by the Lord, really felt in, uh, within their own heart that they, they can, were convicted to continue to give as if they were both working. And as they've done that, they've seen God provide for them in some significant ways and providing some significant sales when they've gone shopping, uh, random grocery cards out of the blue, and uh, even you know doing takeout and getting twice the order for free. So <laughs> that's really cool. It's, it's, it's so great to hear how God is working in people's lives. And I've been, we've been saying this for a while. It's important for you to share those with us because other people are going through situations where they need to have hope and they need to have faith because we do have prayer requests for people who are challenged by their finances right now. The stresses of um, dealing with children at home in this environment. Uh, other people are uh, dealing with illness and some family members are even dealing with loved ones who have COVID. And so, you know, all these different things are going on and we want to be able to join together as a, a Wellspring family, but also with you. If you're just looking in today for the first time, we'd love to be able to connect with you and you can do that. You can reach out to us through our website or through our social media and direct message us. We'd love to be able to join with you in prayer. And if you want to continue to support uh, Wellspring Community Church, we, we just want to say we're so encouraged by your continued generosity and we want to encourage you to be uh, generous in the way you have. And if you're able to do that, we just want to strongly encourage you to, to continue to do that. If you're not, we understand it's a challenging time for, for, for so many. But we want to encourage you to, to ask the Lord, ask Him to lead you and guide you as to what He would want you to do. Don't approach this time or this season with fear, but with faith in your heart that God will lead you and guide you. Those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but will endure forever. And that's found in Psalm 125. So I want to encourage you with that. We also... Um, 
you know, if you, if you want to give, uh, the, there are a number of different ways that you can give. The easiest thing to do is to go to our website, wellspringchurch.ca, and go to the Donate tab on the top of the page. And if you click on that, then you'll find a number of different ways that you can give. Our primary electronic way of giving is through our Church Center app. And that's another way that you can connect with us and connect with groups that are in the church, connect with signing up for the Vacation Bible School. But you'll find the Church Center app, and it's a giving platform as well. If you have a credit card, or a Visa debit card with a CVV number on it, then you'll be able to give through that app. We also have added in this season e-transfers, which makes it easier for you to transfer money directly from your bank account to ours. And so if that's more workable for you, then you'll be able to find the information on the website as well. And obviously you could always mail uh, a check in to Wellspring Community Church at 370 South Pelham Road, Welland, Ontario, L3B 5N8. Well, let's pray together. We're going to pray for um, just this time where we're, we're giving to the Lord and also want to pray for these prayer requests that people have. So let's join our hearts together for those things. Lord, we just come to you right now and we pray, Lord, that as people are uh, listening to you and choosing how to give, Lord, that you would uh, lead them and guide them and that they would do so with faith in their heart, knowing, Lord, that you are ultimately their provider. And Lord, uh, in the same way, we ask for your provision in these prayer requests. Lord, we pray for those that are dealing with COVID. Lord, we pray for healing in their bodies. Lord, we pray for healing in uh, these other prayer requests where people are dealing with significant illnesses in their lives, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are dealing with financial struggle. Lord, we pray for your provision. Lord, we also pray for those that are, are, are ch being challenged by raising kids at home and, and having to be both mom and dad and school teacher at, at home, Lord. We pray that you would give them the strength and the endurance that they need and those that are dealing with the losses, the loss of loved ones, Lord, we also pray that you would be the God of all comfort for them. And so, Lord, we pray that in each one of these situations, if there's anything that's not of you, Lord, we take that uh, take authority in the name of Jesus against those things, and we stand in in the in the, the peace and the rest, knowing, Lord, that you are in control. And Lord, so we also pray for wisdom in each one of these situations, that you would reveal your wisdom and understanding in all of this, so that people could continue to walk not only in their own understanding but in the power that comes through living a life through the Spirit of God. And we thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're going to continue on our service time together today and hope that, that you enjoy being with us. Thank, us again, thank you so much again for allowing us into your home today. God bless you in the house yeah i'm in the house board so i'm gonna read my bible and i'm gonna praise the lord gonna get my worship on and i'll tell all my friends that my god's not dead and his love never ends Good morning and happy Easter. Happy strange Easter for that matter. You know, I was thinking about this morning and uh, 
and what this is going to be like for us while we're sitting in our homes. And I'll tell you right at the front end that one of the concerns that I have that we normally don't have is that, well, if there's a turkey cooking in your oven already, or a ham or something, and you've got that turkey smell wafting through your house, I'm going to have to be competing with the bird in your house for attention. So I don't know if you've got turkey going on or what you may have going on or what you're doing that's different this time because you can't have large family gatherings, you can't do anything like that. Um, I'm, just, I'm just hoping that your smell is not louder than your heart to hear what, uh, what we're going to talk about today. So anyway, happy Easter. This is what we consider the, the high holiday. I know that the, in, in culture we treat Christmas like the big holiday, but really for believers, Easter is the biggest holiday because it's not just about celebrating the coming of Jesus, but it's celebrating what Jesus has accomplished, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again from the dead, physically alive from the dead, that he ascended to heaven, he made a way for us to have eternal life, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, and he has given us his spirit so that we can be empowered to live and become like him and to live for him. And all of that wraps up and connects and is all bundled up in what really what Easter celebrates. It celebrates this resurrection uh, life that Jesus both has and has given to us. And so, um, but I want to talk about some, some specific uh, parts of that, and then we'll kind of come back and bring it all over, or bring it back together again. Um, you know, first of all, just, uh, just even though I don't see you, I feel like saying, hey, it's nice to see you. It's nice to know that we're able to connect. It's nice to know that, uh, that we still have the means to at least communicate with each other. And I hope that you've been having a good weekend. I hope that uh, your heart today is, is open and engaged. I hope that during our time of worship, you've been able to really connect with God and that you're ready to move forward uh, as, we, as we hear God's word. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to dig right in. So Father, thank you again. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for what he did for us. Thank you for that resurrection life that is available to us. And Lord, I pray that during this time we would be encouraged in heart, that we would be strengthened in faith, faith that we would be informed in our minds, and that, Lord, we would just be, be, be just stretched in a good way, Lord, that we would just have growth, that no matter where we are, we would move forward, we would grow, we would expand, we would progress and in all that, Lord, I pray that you would help me just really communicate well both your truth and your heart. And, uh, and Lord, just, just shine. Just because, Lord, we may not be in a room, but Lord, you're able to, to be in every person's living room. You're able to be in every situation. You're able to be in every household. So Jesus, we just ask you to shine in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm kind of starting on a downer, but that's, that's okay for a starting point. But uh, I'm thinking about low, low places or low points. As, as I started to work on this message actually really quite a while back, um, I was processing this issue of low points. And this is before COVID. This is, this is before we were even aware of this, that I was thinking about this message about uh, experiencing the low points of life and what that's like and where God is in the middle of those things, having no clue that we would find ourselves in this situation. And I think God is so good. I think, I think his ability to see ahead and to pre prepare us and, to, and to, to, you know, really be looking out for us in a manner of speaking is just really exquisite is going to be my word today for that because I, I just really appreciate God and his faithfulness and his goodness. So we all have low points. And so I want to, I'm going to start by, by going through a passage in Philippians that talks about Jesus at his, at his high point, Jesus at his low point, and then Jesus back at his high point again. And so uh, we're going to go over to Philippians 2, 
um, and we're going to read verses uh, 6 through 11. Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position, position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died on criminal's death on a cross. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth, and under earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So as as you've heard these scriptures read to you, you uh, will have noticed that, you know, Jesus being equal, being equally God, wasn't holding on to that, but was willing to humble himself. He was willing to go from a high place to a low place. And first it says that he humbled himself and became a human, became one of us. And that was already a step down. But then even beyond that, in obedience to God, he died a criminal's death on the cross. And I would call death a low point, that's for sure. That he experienced death and that going from being God and, and, and you know the agent of creation of all the universe to dead man is a real drop. And then it talks about how that God then, as a result, you know, exalted him to the highest place and brought him back up. And it gives us a really great encapsulated picture of what Jesus did and what Jesus did for us, but more specifically of what Jesus went through. Because we know that he purchased our salvation in this, but the scripture is really talking about what Jesus went through. Jesus was this, he became this, he went through this, and now he's been brought to that. And so we have this picture of what Jesus experienced, what he went through for us. And that shows, of course, what happened to Jesus. The question I would ask then would be, so, okay, so, that's great. We're seeing what Jesus went through, but how does that affect us? Or does that connect with us? And how does that connect with us? Well, I'm glad you asked. You didn't, but I did. Anyway, what we'll do is we're going to look at another passage of Scripture. And there are some similarities in this Scripture. It, it paints the picture of this, the, the, this parallel process, or at least a part of it. But it makes a connection to us as God's people, and as what he's wanting to say to us. And so we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to read verses uh, 19 uh, through uh, 22 or 23, um, and just see, we're going to pick a few phrases out of that, and we're going to see how that fits with us. So let's take a look at Ephesians 1, starting at verse 19. Ephesians 1, 19, 2, 23. And just incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength. He exerted from us when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in his heavenly realms. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in, in this world, but also to the, for the world to come. God has put all things ahead, under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. So this passage of scripture is actually part of a prayer that, this, that the Apostle Paul, the person who, who wrote the book of Ephesians to the Ephesian church, he wrote this and he, he was praying that God would enable us to, 
to understand some things about him. The verses that precede it talk about us understanding the hope that he's called us to and, and what a treasure we are to God. And, and then he comes into this piece where he talks about God's power. And he describes at the end of verse 19 and in the beginning of verse 20, it says that this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms and talks about him being far above and so on and so forth, very similar to the Philippians passage. But there's this great picture here that he's, he's painting about the power that God uh, exercised or exerted or used when he raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to this highest place. And, you know, the thing to think about this is that um, we talk about Jesus being in the low place, and this is the part that was really the, the bell ringer for me, was that at Jesus' lowest point, at, the, at Jesus, at the lowest point of his existence, God showed up with his power and, and brought him out. See, Jesus, Jesus wasn't just like a little bit dead. Or for those of you who watched The Princess Bride, Jesus wasn't mostly dead. Jesus was dead. He was fully dead. You know, uh, w when it comes to, to uh, women and having children, there's no such thing as being a little bit pregnant. You either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. You, you can't be semi-pregnant. You can't be sort of pregnant. You either are or you aren't. In, in, in this case with Jesus, there's no little bit dead. There's no mostly dead. Jesus was dead. And, and if that ain't a low point, I don't know what is. Right now we're living in an unfortunate tragedy and where people are experiencing um, just such sadness in the loss of life that's taking place. And even the, the inability to, to have, you know, large family funerals and all these different things. And just my heart really goes out to people who are, who are having to navigate that kind of loss, that kind of pain. And, and you know, Lord, I just pray right now that for those who are grieving and those who are suffering and those whose lives are connected to others who might be going through those things, that, God, you would bring comfort into their lives, that, Lord, you would help expand their view beyond the moment. Lord, we know that there is a loss that they will have to grieve, and it's not just the loss of a loved one, but it's even the loss of a normal way of dealing with things. And, Lord, I just really pray, God, that you would comfort and strengthen them as they navigate through these things, Lord, and help us to have compassion and care for those around us who are experiencing various levels of suffering in Jesus' name. I just really felt to pray that, and I hope that your heart agrees with that as well. But here was Jesus at this, this bottom, bottom. He was at the bottom of the bottom. And God shows up with his power. God lifts him out of that lowest place. And when you look at that passage in Ephesians, the whole point of, the, of, the, of that passage is that the prayer that's being prayed is that, is that we would understand the greatness of God's power for us. And then it describes that power is just like the power that he used to raise Jesus. In other words, the power that God has for us, available to us, on our behalf, toward us, is the same kind of power that he used to, to, to meet Jesus, to go to, to connect, to reach down to Jesus at his lowest point and bring him out of that. We all have had low points in our lives. And I have no doubt that some of you are experiencing some lows right now. And, and we've, we have emotional lows, we have relational lows, 
We, people can have financial lows. People can have different stressors in their lives. Sometimes you just feel melancholy on a given day. And sometimes you go through a phase in life where you're just really down. Some people battle with, with depression. All of these things are things that just drag us down. Sometimes, you know, the loneliness that comes from the loss of a loved one, that can bring an incredible low. Uh, the, even the loss of a job can bring an incredible low. I know that guys oftentimes will define you know, a lot of their identity in what they do for a living. And then now, you know, you feel like you're supposed to be the provider and you're not working and you can really tank on that. You can really feel a low. And, I, and those are all very real and they, they, they affect us profoundly. And yet none of those are actually as low as the low that Jesus went through. And so if God's power is like the power that he used to reach Jesus at his low and bring him up and exalt him, and that power is for us, then God's power is meant to work that way in our lives. That God, God's power is meant to meet us at our lowest points and lift us up. They're meant, God's power is not meant for us for when we're doing well and we just need a top up. God's power is not, to me not meant to be the icing that's on the cake. God's power is not meant to be the extra toppings on the pizza. God's power is not the cranberry sauce for the turkey. God's power is the lifeline. God's power is, 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 the, is the, the, the life buoy that's thrown out when somebody is drowning and takes them and brings them out. God's power is the firefighter who goes into the burning house and takes the child out. God's power is the thing that finds us in our lowest place, that when we are down, when we are low, when we are stuck, Jesus was helpless. He was He was helpless. And the power of God brought him up. And I don't know, I, I, I'm sure that we, you know, many if not all of us have felt that we hit low points in our lives where we feel helpless. We're confused, we're afraid, we're disillusioned, we're angry, we're, we're, we're perplexed. But God's power is actually made to meet us in those low helpless place, places. I was born paralyzed. A complete paralytic. I don't know why I was born that way. Our teachers of religious law said that it was because of my sin or the sins of my parents. I really don't know, but growing up, it made me feel guilt and shame. I had heard of Jesus and what he had done for others, what he could do for me, but I had no way of getting to him, no way out. So my friends decided to pick me up and carry me to him. Matt and all, they lifted me. When we got there, it was packed. People standing everywhere. I was about to give up. And then, my friends decided to lift me up to a hole in the roof. Yeah, what goes up must come down. So I met him, and I'll never forget the look in his eyes when he saw me. The compassion, the love, and then he said the words I never knew I wanted to hear. Your sins are forgiven. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But I knew it was true. I felt it was true. And people kept talking, but I couldn't understand a word they said. I, I was relishing 
in my newfound freedom. And then, all of a sudden, Jesus said to me, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. <laughs> yes! Jesus changed my life forever. With great compassion and love, he freed me on the inside from guilt and shame. It was, for lack of a better term, a beautiful exchange of my brokenness for his wholeness. And on top of it all, he gave me legs to stand on, to walk on, to run with. And so I ran with joy, praising God all the way home. You heard the story of a man being lowered through a roof and, and he was lame. And, you know, in those days, it's not like he could, you know, collect some type of government pay. If you couldn't work, then you, you had to beg. There, there were no other options or your family took care of you. That was it. And this man gets lowered through the roof and Jesus, before he heals his body, pronounces forgiveness over him. And the interesting thing is, is that his, his um, lame legs, his inability to walk, probably made him feel very low. One of the things that you may not realize is that in the culture of that day, especially if a person was born with, with, with those kinds of things, there was an assumption that existed in the, in, in the, in the Jewish community that if you were experiencing a low, or I'm sorry, that if you were, were born with an illness like that, that there was somehow some kind of sin involved. There was some evil. Your parents sinned or something was wrong and the, there was a curse on your life. So the thing is, is that he may not have been able to walk, but his heart was probably likely filled with shame and guilt, unnecessary shame and guilt. And so what Jesus did when he pronounced forgiveness over him was he spoke to the real low point in his life and he brought him out of that low. And then, you know, and then he healed his body, got him on his feet, made him able to work, made him able to move forward in his life. But yet the real low in his life, the real, the, the real thing that probably really poisoned his mind and his heart was the shame and guilt. And Jesus was able to reach into that and he was able to pull him out. And when we go through those lows, we experience, we can experience the very same thing from God. There's this passage that we're going to read in, uh, in Romans 8 that talks about kind of this struggle that we have in life. Because the Bible talks about that when we're a child of God, when we're a believer, when we're a new creation in Jesus, that... Our spirit has been made alive. We've been forgiven and God has put his Holy Spirit in us and he's made us a new person. But because of the hum our humanity, the human element of ourselves, that the Bible uses the term body and flesh to describe them, when it uses body, it's not only talking about our physical body, but it's talking about the, the, the limitations of our humanity and how that there's a, a wrestling and a battle that goes there where, you know, it, it's, it's easier to sleep in than it is to get up early. It's easier to overeat than it is to undereat. Uh, it's, 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 easier, it's easier to do things that just don't seem to get, be good for you than to do those things that are actually beneficial for you. And those, those are, you know, things begin with discipline, whereas the other stuff, you just, you don't, it just comes naturally because of our frailty in our humanity. And, and this verse talks about how God's power works in this. So we're going to go to Romans 8. And we're going to read verses 10 and 11. So let's, let's go there right now. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death, 
because of sin, the spirit gives light because of whiteness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is in dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his spirit who lives in you. Romans 8, 10, 10. Okay, so first of all, I'll give you a moment to get over the cute factor. And, uh, and uh, you know, in all of these scripture passages, I just want to just on a side note here, just say thank you to the kids who were willing to, to do that and to shoot some video of themselves and kind of put themselves out there. We love our Wellspring kids, and it's been hard because we haven't been able to have children's church. We haven't been able to get them together. And so this is a great way for, for, uh, to make some of them feel like they're part of our community because they are. We love our Wellspring kids, and we bless our Wellspring kids. Uh, but thank you all for reading those scriptures. But there is this, the, it talks here in verse 10 how that, that our body is still subject to death because of sin. There's still that part in us. But our spirit is alive, or the spirit gives life because of righteousness. But this verse 11 is so powerful because it says if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, right, there's that power, is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. See, what, what that's saying is this, is that as we're doing life, we still have dead parts to us. We still have parts that drag us down. We still have battles with, with urges, with, with um, habits, with attitudes, with wrong thinking patterns. All of those things can, can work against us in our lives and we can become frustrated sometimes. But this promise here is this, is that if God's spirit lives inside of us, then those low places, those dead places, those helpless places, Jesus was dead and helpless, and the Spirit of God raised him from the dead, and it's saying here, if that same Spirit lives in you, then the Spirit of God will reach into those dead, helpless places of your life and bring life to it and lift you up and move you forward and pull you out and rescue you, and strengthen you, and do all of those things. He reaches into those parts of our life and infuses life. Now, it doesn't all happen at once, it doesn't, it, and it doesn't happen all of a sudden. Sometimes it does. But the Bible's pretty clear that this is a process, and we go, go from glory to glory, and there's this, there, there's this you know, this feels like never-ending process, but let me turn that in a positive way. It's a never-ending process, which means we can spend our whole lives discovering God's power at work in our weak places. We can spend our whole lives constantly discovering God's power reaching into our helpless places, into our dead places, into our weak places, and bring us up. Now, when we talk about, you know, Good Friday and Easter and the sacrifice of Jesus... What I just described to you, we call that an exchange. You see, Jesus exchanged our death for his life. Jesus exchanged our weakness for his strength. He's, he exchanged our sin for his righteousness. He exchanged our brokenness for his wholeness. And there's this amazing exchange that took place in our lives where he comes and says, you have sin, I have righteousness, let's trade. I'll take your sin, and I'll give you my righteousness. You have brokenness, and I'm the epitome of wholeness. I'll take your brokenness, and I'll give you my wholeness. This is an exchange. An exchange is like where you trade something, right? And this is such a great trade, because everything we have to offer him is broken, dead, and, ho and hopeless, and helpless. 
and everything he has to offer us is filled with life and power and love and freedom. It's a good deal. It's a good trade. And he trades that with us. And when God begins to make those exchanges in our lives, then it changes the things that we can say. We find ourselves that, that a person as they enter into those exchanges where the power of God goes into our dead, helpless places and rescues us, someone will say, I was afraid, but I am secure. I was rejected, but I am accepted. I was angry, but now I'm at peace. I was addicted, but now I'm free. I was depressed, but now I'm joyful. I was ashamed, but now I'm confident. I was confused, but now I'm clear-minded. I was disillusioned, but now I am hopeful. I was broken, but now I'm whole. I was lame like the man through the roof. I was lame, but now I can walk. I was sinful, but now I'm forgiven. I was dead, but now I'm alive. And that's what Jesus came to do for us. Because without Jesus, we're all dead. But Jesus experienced it for us so that we could have his life. We, we, we have a pastor friend, a fellow that we've had speak in our church a few t- uh, you know, several times. And a number of years ago, he made this stir- statement, and it always stuck with me. He said, you know what? Jesus didn't come into the world to make bad people good. Jesus came into the world to make dead people alive. And this is the exchange that we trade our death for his life. We trade all of these broken things. We trade all of our helplessness for his power. And so as you go through your day and as you go forward from today, I just really want to encourage you. First of all, if you've not put your faith in Jesus, if you haven't entrusted your life to him, why hold on to your dead stuff? Why don't you trade your death for his life? Why not trade your your low places for his high places? Why not trade your weaknesses for his strength? Why not trade your sadness for his joy? Why not trade your failings for his successes? Why not trade what, what you have for what he has? Because Jesus has far more than any of us. And he offers it to us to share to us with us. So if you would say today, Jesus, I just, I exchange, I give you my stuff and I receive your stuff. I give you my sin and I receive your forgiveness. I give you my death and I receive your life. Then the power of God reaches down to your dead and helpless places and he pulls you out and he makes you new. And if you are a a servant, a follower of Jesus, a believer today, then let's remind ourselves, let's not only celebrate the resurrection of Jesus that he's alive, but let's celebrate the resurrection of Jesus that the same power that raised Christ from the dead, the same spirit of resurrection that brought him from the dead that lives in us, he promises will give life to our weak, dead, broken places, that our bodies are dead because of sin, but his spirit infuses life, that our, our humanity fails us, but he infuses life, and that we can move forward because he's the life giver and we're the receivers. I want to pray. And, uh, and if you, you know, if you want to give your life to Jesus today, then, you know, just like I had just exemplified, just honestly do that in your heart and just say, Jesus, I just come to you and I ask you for your forgiveness. And I'm going to pray along that line and then I'm going to pray for all of us. And then we're just going to speak blessing over your life, over your Easter, but over your life and, and, and protection over us as we move forward. So Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching online. And Lord, there may be some who don't really know you or maybe have drifted off or maybe don't really understand or haven't understood what it really is to believe in Jesus. I pray, Lord, that today they would realize that you paid such a wonderful and yet costly price for us, giving up your life, suffering in such a terrible way, and taking all of our sin on you, Lord. It wasn't just death, 
but it was also taking on the weight of the guilt of the shame of every human being. And Lord, I pray that if they're at that place today where they want to put their faith in you, that they would say, Jesus, come into my life. Lord, put that, that life-giving spirit in me. Forgive me for my, my shortcomings, my frailties. I exchange today. I exchange my death for your life. I exchange my weakness for your strength. I exchange my sin for your forgiveness today. And Father, that they would put their hope and their trust in you and they would follow you all the days of their life in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for all of us that as we continue to journey forward in life, that we would not lose sight of the fact that we're not alone in this. That, that we may wrestle and we may struggle and we may fall sometimes and we may still feel helpless and we may still feel dead sometimes in parts of our lives, feeling like, like we just can't get some pieces together. Maybe we feel heavy or maybe there's depression or maybe there's sadness or maybe there's recurring addictions or, or thought patterns that are unhealthy. But Lord, we choose today to believe. We ask you to reveal to us, make real your power available for us. And we choose to receive that power today. That same kind of power that raised Jesus from the dead will raise us up, will lift us up, will give us life, Lord. And we choose to receive that life in our weak and broken places so that we can be transformed and become more like Jesus. And Father, as we continue to journey forward in this strange new way of doing life, of doing community, of doing church life, of doing family, of doing friendship, I pray for wisdom for each one of us. I pray for protection and safety. Lord, and we just pray this thing would come to an end and that, Lord, that there would come a place where we can all gather again and hug and, and enjoy and sit across from a table face to face and, uh, and, and have proximity again. But we know in the meantime, you are still with us. We know in the meantime, your power is still very real. And so, Lord, I just commit your people to your grace, which is able to keep them strengthen them and guard them throughout this process and moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you're encouraged today. Happy Easter. Whatever, Whether you're ordering takeout or making a meal at home, whether you're just your small family unit or just by yourself, understand we're still connected. Our hearts are for you and and as wellspringers, our hearts are for each other and we're praying for each other and we're standing together. We're going to get through this and we're going to be okay and, and, and enjoy the rest of your day and celebrate the power and the goodness of God that's available in your life. Hey everybody, uh, it's Andrew and Mark. And we are practicing social distancing. <laughs> Hi! Even on this uh, Easter weekend. And we just wanted to connect with you outside of the messages and the worship and the announcements and just say hi to you and tell you that we love you. Uh, those, of, those of you that are our Wellspring family, we love you. And those of you that we're getting to know um, in this new reality, we just want to express our, our heart to you and God's love to you. Uh, in this season and pray that we can somehow connect with you and be a blessing to you. Wow, it's like he said everything. So there's not a whole lot I can add to that. Um, it definitely is a different time that we're journeying through. And I know some of you I've had contact in Zoom meetings and some of you are connecting with each other. And, uh, we, you know, I, I do want to encourage you that whatever existing relationships you already had in church and people that you might have sat with or hung out with, um, you know, try to make a point of connecting with each other. We may be separate, but we don't have to be disconnected. If anything, sometimes, you know, that, or this is an opportunity to take 
the, the world of social media and actually turn it and leverage it in a very, very positive way. And so I just want to encourage you, stay connected. If you think of somebody you know of, don't just think about them, pray for them. You never know what people are thinking or going through in, every, in any given moment. We've been doing our best, and I, this is the part I get to say Andrew doesn't, is that we've been doing our best to try to bring to you a good balance between production quality and honoring the, the, the laws and just and, and being real. We thank you for your patience with us. Uh, we're not trying to make a big production. We're just trying to present to you something that you can really connect your heart to. And I just want to commend Andrew because Andrew's put in a bazillion amount of hours because every change we've made has been a learning curve. And, uh, and several volunteers have stepped up and really helped out. You know, we want to thank Amy. We want to thank... Um, Aaron Goudreau and, uh, you know, uh, musicians, just people have really helped. So we just want to say thank you to all of you, though, for just sticking through this and just putting your trust in God. And uh, we're going to keep working through this and we're going to figure it out and we're all going to grow. That's for sure.